So in previous class, guys, like we discuss what is like Swiss stacking. However, these newer platform, okay, like Cisco 9400, 9500, 9600, they are not supporting stacking. On those devices, we can use similar like a stack feature, which is known as SPL or stack wise virtual. Okay, so this is like similar like guys, earlier like we have old course, which is okay, which basically support virtual switch system. The same kind of function you are getting on 9500 and 9600 and the 9400. So the idea is, guys, uh, do you see, like, let, let's see if you're using 9500 on the core switches as a core, and the 9300 you're using as an access layer. So physically, guys, like you see, you will connect the, like, one uplink going to the core one, second uplink going to the core two. Similarly, this access switch also, so this is a physical topology. But once you configure on the 9500 uh, VSL feature, okay, I'm oh, sorry, stack wise virtual. So, VSS again, this is a old technology on 6500 and 4500. On the 9500, guys, similar feature like which is known as stack wise virtual. So once you configure, like once you configure the stack wise virtual on the 9500, your both the cores, which is okay, become a single logical switch. And then your logical diagram look like this. So you can configure the MLAG, okay? You can configure the port channel. Because in this design, um, as we know, okay, so, we stp okay stp block all my alternative path my backup link okay but once you configure the port channel both will forward the traffic okay so let, let me go through the configuration okay so uh, we cannot like do the practical on evng but still the configuration is not so those guys like who already know the configuration of vss similar like a, con a configuration we have uh, stack wise virtual okay. so this is a good document okay i'll show you like step by step the configuration of stack wise virtual so see, this is a basically the diagram physical diagram so which i show you but once you once you enable the stack wise virtual Logically, it become a single switch. So, the first guy like we need to define the virtual domain stack wise virtual domain, and even this configuration is if you compare with Nexus on BPC, almost the same. Okay, so first we make sure like both the switches must be on the same domain. Okay? Then basically we define uh, like the port. And so here, guys, like if you see this diagram, so these are the two port, okay, which is working as a SVL, stackwise virtual link. I mean, like over this link, okay, basically you are synchronizing your control plan traffic. So this link is not for carrying the data plan traffic. This is only for controlling the synchronized. So on the stacking, the stacking, like once you connect the switches in a through the stack cable, okay, your stack cable doing the same thing. Your stack cable is basically behind the scene. They are synchronizing your control plan traffic, but here we don't have any stack port. So we just connected these two port and configured in a port channel. And over the port channel, we are saying this is our uh stack wise virtual link SPL link which is basically used to control the uh, synchronizing the control plan traffic and even over this link okay 
uh, they are basically figuring out okay who is the active device and who is the standby again this active and standby only for the control plant traffic however the data plant traffic okay both will forward the traffic okay? so for the data plan basically both will working as an active active And this is the uh, in uh, uh, in VSS that that feature is not included. Okay, in case if your link goes down, still there is like alternative way. So this link is known as uh, DAD. So let me show you the full form of this. Okay, and idea is basically if my SPL link goes down, like the dual active detection. So this is the alternative way to see like whether my primary device is up or no. So that's the mainly thing, okay, like you basically defining the doma domain, then you're defining like which is your uh, stack wise virtual link, okay. So this is basically, like we are saying uh, 25 and 26. These are basically you, you working as a stack wise virtual link. And then you are defining which is your dad link that is it okay on the, on the other side also basically you are doing the same thing and here guys like you can see switch and when, once you configure the configuration on both the switches so you can verify like show switch similar like a stack okay both will synchronizing only difference on the 9300 they are synchronizing through via the stack port okay here we have like using different port so normally like those port could be like a 40 gb or 100 gb or it's up to you okay because 9500 we basically use the qsap and those QSAP either 40 GB or 100 GB. So similar like a, like a stack show switch, but the only thing in a stack, you can combine up to a eight switch. In stack wise virtual, you can only combine two switch. Okay. So if we see like now end to end diagram, okay, let, let me like, like show you let's say you have an enterprise setup okay how physically they connected and and let's say if you're doing migration and you are installing the new switches okay what should be uh, how is your basically the setup you can design okay let's say if you want to do the modification okay so as i told you like on the floor okay let's say on the floor it, it depends like how many port you require. So let's say I have a building and in that building, like we have a five floor and in each floor, like we have a different, different uh, number of uh, port requirement. So we have a, like a, a requirement, like let's say we have a floor one. In a floor one, basically in a rack, we installed five switches, okay, 9300. And these five switches, obviously, they are connected through a stack. You know, all those 9300, okay, uh, I, I might be only need two uplink. So I will like, this is my switch one. This is my switch five. On those two switches, okay, I will insert the uplink module. So like, if I show you like the picture of 9300, okay. So if, if we're going to... So you see, like you, you don't need to put the module, uplink module on all the switches. So this is the basically, so by default guys, the switch is basically came with, so here it's just like a, a blank space. So on the blank space, basically, uh, you can remove that blank space and insert these modules. Okay. 
So let's say I have a floor. On that floor, we have a five switches. And on switch one and switch five, I insert this module. Okay, maybe I just only need this one, okay, which is basically two uh, uplink port. Okay, and the first uplink I'm connecting to the core one. And the second link, okay, I will use from switch five. The reason why, if 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 we use a both uplink from the same switch, there's no point if this switch is down. The, the whole floor basically lowers the connectivity. Definitely on switch five, I will insert this module and I, this link will go to uh, my second core. So each floor, like maybe like one floor has five member in a stack. Second floor might be have eight member. Third floor might be a six. And then this is basically your scenario. And, and as you configure the these switches also in a stack wise virtual, so your logical diagram look like this. Okay. So each basically, this is basically the floor. Okay. Not a single switch. We have a two link, second floor, we have a two link, third floor, we have a two up link, fourth floor, we have a two up link. And and the reason basically we are configuring port channel because we want to achieve the active active forwarding. So both will basically forward the truck. And then below we have an end machine and devices. So this is the basically your diagram or if you design your network, okay, so this is the way you need to design your network. And yeah. So any question up to this point? Any question? When I unmute, you can ask the question, okay, if you are. Mahesh, clear? Yeah, sir. Vishal? <coughs> yes, sir. And Karan? Uh, clear, sir. Okay. okay. So, yeah, that, that is it, basically. The other advantage of... Uh, so, configuring those switches okay in a stack wise virtual not only we are getting the advantage of uh mlag plus you see like uh, these 9500 okay once you configure these switches in a in a stack sorry in a stack wise virtual so this switch has one CPU, also known as soup engine. When we have a second switch, 9500, and this CPU also soup engine, once you configure these switches through a stack-wise virtual link, as both the switches now become a single switch, it will basically show you like a this is the active soup for active soup engine is cpu and this will show you the standby okay now the question is so normally this is known as like one is active other is standby by default they use sso which is known as stateful switch over to so the point is so you need to understand okay behind the scene what's going on let's say if this switch goes down uh, are we in a network uh, are we see or go, uh, get any failure if let's say your one switch goes down 
So you see like when this switch, let's say this is my active CPU, once this go, goes down, as they are running SSSO stateful switch over, immediately your second soup okay become active and this that's why this term is basically stateful switch over so if this happened sso happened there will be no impact for the data plant traffic and but make sure like every device okay every device must be dual connected so these are the devices if you see like one port is going to this other is going to this if you have a scenario like this let's say you have one flow and that flow is physically only connected to this 9500 and as this is goes down then these switches okay these switches will not face any issue however this switch has only one uplink which is going to 9501 this goes down then all the end devices okay which is connected to this switch they will lose the connectivity so so the point is it's not like that uh like you just see let's say you go to any company network and see, okay, they have enabled uh, stack-wise virtual on the core switch, on the core switches. Okay, on the 9300 they have a stack, but still you need to, if you let's say doing any activity, maybe let's say you are rebooting this switch. Okay, somehow any reason. Okay, so in that case, you also need to check, make sure all the port on 90 let's say on this we have 11 port showing connectors and on this switch we have only 10 port showing connector there is like one orphan port okay there is like a, we need to figure out okay because this switch which we which we are going to reboot it has more connection but on the other hand the, the other switch only have a 10 connection that means something is not dual connected okay in that case definitely guys uh, you will lose the connectivity okay so you cannot perform the uh, your activities your activ activity is basically rebooting the your 9500 switch maybe one by one but as you don't have a dual connection end to end you will lose the connectivity you will then in that case you will do this activity during the non production hour Okay, so it's not like 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 that. Okay, like everything is like MLAG is properly configured. We have a stack wise also configured, but still need to check. Okay, you need to ch check that. Make sure everything is dual connect in your network. And one more thing, like as we are seeing this this chassis, okay, ninety five hundred there might be a concern in the real world you will see okay how we how we connect any 10 gb port on this model because you see like guys this is not a sap like let me give you the idea about this sap and qsap so earlier guy like we have a sap which is basically 10 gbps or maybe one gps when we're talking about this QSAP, QSAP, this, this is basically the picture of the QSAP. This is like a little bigger, okay? And QSAP means the speed which has either 40 or 100. And in SAP also, we have two types of SAP, okay? One is like LR, other is SR, short reach. Okay, now let's understand the requirement, okay? I have a device. And that device only support 10 GPS port. Now I need to connect that device to this switch. And this switch is don't support any because this only support QSAP. How we connect? Okay. Let's understand the option. Okay. First option, we may install any switch in middle 
let's say nine. So this is my server. We may install any switch in middle, which basically convert, which also has a 10 GBPS port and also have like uplink port, okay, which are uh, QSAP. So I will connect the server port to this 10 GB and QSAP port to this 9500. This is my first option. The second option, guys, you can also use breakout cable. Okay, now what is breakout cable? Okay, so I will show you the picture. Okay, what is a break breakout cable, guys? They will come like this. Okay, one side breakout cable is is QSF. Then the same cable divided this QSFP to four ports. And each port is basically if the QSAP, let's say 40 GB. Uh, each port basically show the speed 10 G. Let me show you the picture of the breakout cable. Okay. So if I show you, because I, I go so many requirements like this, then physically, guys, we connected those devices through the breakout cable. Okay. Let me show you the picture of the breakout cable. Okay. So for Google breakout cable and the beauty of this breakout cable, okay, you don't need to purchase uh, the QSAP, okay. It, it, in millet, guys, they have a, a, this QSAP plus cable. So let me show you the better picture images. So, yeah. Okay, so this is basically the idea. So one side they have a QSAP and the other side they have a 10 GBPS port. Okay, like they look like this. So this is the basically the breakout cable is. So this is like one side is QSAP. And do you see like the size of 10 GB? So the only thing like guys, like basically on the 9500, oh, it only support QSAP. So you will plug this side on the 9500. Let's say on port number one. Then there is one command. You will say like breakout on port one. So this port logically will show you four port, okay? Because each port now 10 GBPS now. And on this side, the cable, you will connect, let's say you have a server, and it has a number like port one, two, three, and four. You will connect like one one side, one server, second port to second server, third port to third server, and fourth is port. Okay. So so the requirement was again, I'm telling you, on the 9500, you want to connect any device which only support 10 GBPS. So this is the one option through the breakout cable, you can achieve this. And there is command like you need to run, okay? After run this command, this physical port show you four separate logical port and the port speed of that uh, logical port, okay? That is equal to 10 GB. And you have now, these 10 four connection, okay, which is basically supporting 10 G. Anybody seen breakout breakout cable in the real world? If, who is this 006697? I'm going to remove it, guys. Okay, anybody guys see the breakout cable in the real world? Anji just got it. Just weird. Dekhi ka breakout cable. Mene unmute ka rakha aapko. Karan? To nahi dekha ho aapne. Mahesh, Bishal? Nahi, mein nahi dekhi sir. Nahi, nahi. SFP is a good thing. I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do 
Okay, so this is the, again basically uh, only I have seen the scenario because the uh, 9500 they don't have a 10 Gbps port. There I see like we uh, connected some of the devices through because the old devices those only support 10 Gbps. Okay, and on, on those scenario we use this breakout cable. Okay, so so far, guys, like we cover switch stack, we cover stack virtualize, which is similar feature like a VSS on 9500, 9600. We cover SSO stateful switch over. Basically, when we are moving the traffic from one CV, CPU to another, it won't impact the data plan traffic. Okay, and you can also manually, there is a command you can run and you can also force like, a, let's say you have a switches in a, in a, and this is my primary CPU. This is my secondary CPU. So there is a command like, a, let me show you the command. You can switch over the CPU, okay? Which is also basically SSO. And uh, if you want to do through by the command, so you will see the command redundancy for switch over. This is the command. Let me type on the Google. So this is the command redundancy for switch over. The show switch, okay, this is a command. If you run this command, basically you, you can see this picture, okay? If I, one is showing active, other is showing standby. And if you run this command, your other switch, basically other CPU become active, okay? Let me show you the music. All uh, yeah, this is a command. Did you want to see four switch out? Yeah, this is, this command is also supported in VSS also because VSS is also basically just like as on the newer platform, they just change the name. Also, like they introduce the new link, okay, which is a dad. That's basically alternative way to, to find out okay who is a primary and who is a, a secondary. Uh, like in BPC, again, we have a two link, okay. Like one is BPC peer link and one is keep alive. The same kind of function basically they provide on 9500. So any, any question up to this point? Any question? Okay, if you don't have any question, let's move to the switch upgrade, okay? How we do switch upgrade on the 9300? And what is the older way, okay? So as I showed you guys, like when we design the network, okay? So let's say uh, in each floor, we are installing the switches and we configure this switches in a stack. So logically it become a single switch. Okay, let's say we have a five member and this is the model we have a 9300 and we want to upgrade the switches. So earlier guys, like uh, there is two way to upgrade the switch. Earlier we use uh, bundle mode. So what is bundle mode? Okay, bundle mode like maybe you know, like you, those who are working, okay, maybe like you upgraded so many switches, but you didn't notice, okay, like a bundle one, basically you are using the binary file. You see like the Cisco iOS, okay, they come with this, this extension, okay, dot bin file, binary file. The other mode we have, install mode. 
And here we don't use a binary file, we use package. Okay. So basically we extract the binary file and it will show you some package. These are basically less overhead, okay, when we're using the package inside of the binary file. Another advantage of configuring is upgrading the switches via this method, okay. I will show you uh, basically it's like when you have five member, each member has their own flash. So let's say we have a switch one, two, three, four, switch five. That means this switch has five flash or boot flash. So earlier, like when we're using this old method, okay, what we need to do, even this switch in a stack, we first copy the new image to boot flash one, then second then third manually four even it's very easy once you copy the boot let's say new image into the primary boot flash you can simply run the command like copy boot flash first and then copying to boot flash two it's very easy okay within the switch okay within the same switch if you copy in a file that will that will basically take very less time. But the point is, every time, okay, if we're using this bundle mode, I need to copy the maze into the each flash, okay. In the install mode, if you're using this method, it will automatically copy the file. Once you copy the file to the primary flash, you run this command like install command, it will automatically copy the uh, new maze to all the flashes, okay? So even these eight days, okay, like when you purchase the switch, by default, even on the new switches, okay, the default method is this method, okay, install method. Let me show you, okay, like about this detail. So if we, let's say, on a Google, upgrading, Cisco switch 9300 in a switch stack. I don't use the Cisco, let me use any other. With the Cisco document, okay, they normally have so many. We need to basically read read a lot, okay, so that's why. Um, but let's see this first link. So, the first thing I like you always do, okay, this is basically like the command, but the first, let's say your manager is uh, giving you the, like the activity, okay, okay, hey, so we are planning to upgrade the switches maybe next month, so this is our current version, can you check with Cisco, so what is the new suitable version for our platform, okay, simply guys, like you will go to uh, Google, you will go to Cisco website. So let's say we are using 9300X switches in my environment and I want to upgrade the switches. So for 9300 image down. When you type this on a Google, if you let's say go to Cisco website, Okay, you can simply click on download and you can select the model. Okay, that, let's say I'm, I'm using this model. Then you can go to this iOS XE. This is a basically the version switches are coming with this version. Okay, iOS XE. You can go to the download option and Let's see, you can see like previously guys, you are using 17 point, any version, uh, let's say you're using 70.3, you can check that, okay. Always is suggested here for this model, these are the suggested version and you can pick any one. So even let's say if you raise that case, Cisco tag case with Cisco, they will also see this document, okay? They will suggest a two version to you. So 
and then you will basically let's say you will click on this any of this suggested version okay you will download the image so this is the binary file you need okay once you download this this file okay obviously if you click here it will ask you the cisco uh foundation okay username and password once you put the username and password you will download the file on your laptop once the file is downloaded okay so you need to transfer this file to the switch and the way we can transfer the file to the switch let me show you like we use any of the software okay like in in on real world okay we can use tftp we can use ftp we can use sftp any any of uh, like mechanism okay we can use okay. we can use any any of software okay so i i i mainly use ftp or http both are fast okay as compared to tftp so there is a, like software okay like if i show you on a uh, which is 3c demo this is the software okay this software basically is you can use for tf as a tftp ftp as a syslog and yeah single software okay basically providing all these features once you once you download uh, let's say this is my laptop this is a switch we are going to upgrade First, we need to copy the file. Okay, we need to copy the file like copy. You need to understand this copy how this command work. Okay, so copy and running configuration, and I'm sending this configuration to let's say right copy startup. I'm sending this configuration to my TFTP server. So if you understand this configuration, okay, so the first is basically always a source and the second is basically is the destination so here again like what i'm doing i'm sending my configuration to this server which is basically acting as a tftp server i mean this is destination right so i will say copy source and destination then when you press enter you will say they will ask you what is the, your TFTP server IP. In the same way, guys, if you see, like, let me show you, like, if you press enter, it will ask you here in our case, 192.168.1.100. This is my TFTP server IP. And you see, like, my file is copy. Similar way, if you see this document, okay. If you understand this first, what he did, okay, he copy the image, copy the image, copy TFTP, and I want to copy this. So this is my destination, okay. I want to put this file into my flag, and this is the version. So in 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 your case, the version should be this, okay, because you are upgrading the switches to this this uh, version, and then we are not changing the so earlier guys i will show you okay then we will use this command okay install add file and the flash and this is the file and press enter what this command do it will automatically if you see this switch has two member this switch has two member it's showing copying the this file from switch one to switch two if we have a switch stack it has five member automatically earlier when we using the bundle mode we need to do this manually we need to go to every flash and copy the file but as this is using install method so it will do automatically plus as I told you, this method is not using the binary file. It will extract this binary file to the package. And those uh, for 
booting, okay, they will use those packages, okay, instead of the binary file. And they are basically less overhead over the binary file, taking less resources, switch, okay. That's the basically the advantage. There is one more advantage I will tell you, okay, using this method. But if you see like behind the scenes, this is happening. Once the all the pa packages are added, then you will activate the package. So there is one more command. So even you can upgrade all the switches, okay, just after that, you can see activate and commit. Single command you will configure, switch will upgrade, okay. Or you can you can break it, okay. Like break it, break it like first, you are adding the package, then activate, then commit. So there is two way in, in a install mode, okay. Either you can break it, or you can perform this activity in a one step. Okay, just simply after that, you can mention activate and commit. Maybe first time you will use the first option like break it. And once you know there is no issue with the new version, just simply run this command. Okay, activate and commit. So this means guys, like your switch upgrade in a one step. Okay. So this is like a, a basically option is showing in, in a through break okay like first they will add the package then activate and once you activate guy like your switch basically going to asking for the reboot you will say yes and then and he forget there is a one more command which is install commit okay let me go let's say more detail okay let's say go to the cisco website um install and upgrade so, okay. so bundle this is installable okay. let's see the guys this install mode and bundle mode so you can verify this okay you see by default these days okay every switch come with this setting okay you see this setting so it is saying boot from the package not from the bin file so earlier guys like if you see like when we upgrading the router and switches we say a boot system flash then we define the binary file path basically and then save the configuration and enter this command basically telling the device hey this is the basically the maze you need to boot from but now in the configuration we have a setting this which basically saying don't boot from the binary file boot from the package package okay and you can also see uh, the below you will see like here it's not showing here but here guy like you will see like the method is installed but this is the thing okay this is the thing uh, you see like uh, if let's say if you moving from bundle to installed you will say no boot system then you will set the boot method okay through the package dot config package dot config show version yeah here you will see the mode guys so this is the command guys show version you will see the what mode you are using you are using install mode or bundle mode these days everybody using install mode okay nobody using the bundle mode anymore and if if you have in your exit new uh, you can check your co company switches guys you are using install mode or bundle mode i know like uh, some of my colleague okay they even don't know what is install mode they are still using bundle mode okay even on the 9300 or model also so this is the thing okay so earlier this is showing uh 
bundle mode option no so it is showing boot from a binary file so if we use this option then this is the old mode you see after that a bundle because now we are booting the switch okay from the win file so any question how many like you have done the switch upgrade is it correct any switch upgrade yes sir we did which method you use uh, i use the install i add file hmm. and you know the difference like install and bundle mode uh bundle Only... mode uh, we did not try but i uh, have tried for install mode uh, like we have verified that md5 and everything mm -hmm. after that we will uh, check it out at package.config file or boot uh, this one and now at least you know like why what is the advantage of uh, install mode right yes so like when you upgrade the switch that is a swiss stack or only standalone switch no, no, only stand on Swiss stack. We need to do one next, uh, maybe next uh, week or next to next week. Okay. Any uh, other guy who like recently upgraded the switches? Jasveer? Which company ke switches use or every company? Mein? Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway. So yeah, that is it, guys. Like uh, so tomorrow we will start the HSRP, then we will do um last class. Not after that, we will see the the security part on the switches like 8.1x authentication and map triple A. And then after that, guys, like might be our last class will be like a more focus on the troubleshooting. Okay. Yeah, that is it, guys. Like any question you can ask me regarding the previous classes and regarding the today class. Okay, if you don't have any question, we can end the class. No question? Voice issue, text kar de bhai, text kar de. If you have voice issue at your side. Okay then guys, see you tomorrow. Yeah, you can tell just I have one question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vishal. No, just we you know being that he has one question. We, we, we whenever we do the smart configuration that I didn't understand. Yeah, you text me on the WhatsApp also. Uh, maybe like next time, like when you have voice issues is solve, okay. We will discuss on this smart configuration, okay. So tomorrow we have a class. We will see because I didn't understand. Okay, what is this like smart configuration means? Okay, yeah, I know. Like they asked this question during the interview. Okay, so we will discuss regarding this tomorrow. Okay, then guys, see you tomorrow at the same time.